Dear friends in Christ, welcome to another episode of Sunday Reflections with Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu. Today is Divine Mercy Sunday. It is exactly eight days after Easter Sunday. Why do we call it Divine Mercy Sunday? Firstly, today is Divine Mercy Sunday because on this day we remember how Jesus Christ appeared to his disciples eight days after his resurrection to establish the sacrament of divine mercy when he said to the disciples, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Secondly, on this day we celebrate the feast of divine mercy in keeping with Jesus' instructions for St. Maria Faustina. What is divine mercy? How did Jesus show us mercy? Is there a limit to what God can forgive? How can divine mercy be expressed among Christians today? These questions bring us to our lessons for today. Number one, God's mercy endures forever. As our psalmist today sings, we must praise God for he is good and his mercies endures forever. In the opening prayer of today's Mass, we prayed, God, we praise God for giving us the grace to understand the nature of the fount in which we have been washed, the spirit in which we have been reborn, and the blood through which we have been redeemed. When Jesus was pierced on the cross, Blood and water flowed from his side. This is the very image of the divine mercy. Whenever you gaze at this picture, remember Jesus on the cross, offering you unlimited pardon and mercy. Archbishop Akubeze would say that we sometimes assume we can limit God's forgiveness by refusing to go to confession or assuming we, we take God's mercy for granted true frequent confessions. Dear friends, there is no limit to God's forgiveness. No matter what your past has been, you can begin anew. God's mercies endures forever. Despite all that was done to Jesus, he did not even wait to die before forgiving his enemies. Right on the cross, Jesus said, Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Luke chapter 23 verse 34 Even though his disciples fled from him at his hour of trial, Jesus appeared to them and the first thing he says is, Peace be with you. Lesson number two. Mercy is the cure for restlessness. Seeing how troubled, restless and scared the disciples were, Jesus said to them twice, Peace be with you. In other words, I forgive you, and I forgive you completely. We cannot wish peace for those who have hurt us without forgiving them. On the other hand, we cannot have peace if we fail to forgive. Are you troubled within yourself and lacking peace of mind? Why not forgive and forget the offenses of those who have hurt you today? Lesson number three, in confession, it is God who forgives sins. Just after declaring peace upon the disciples, Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Then he gave them the power to absorb or retain sins. Just as God breathed on Adam at creation, giving him life, Jesus breathed on the disciples, giving them extraordinary power to do something only God can do. At confession, the priest can only absolve us of our sins through the power of the Holy Spirit, which Christ breathed on these disciples on this occasion. Lesson number four. The secret of Christian unity is mercy and forgiveness. In our first reading, 
we are told that the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. No needy person was among them because no one claimed ownership of their possessions. Those with lands or houses sold them and the proceeds were distributed to each person according to their needs. When we compare this gathering of believers to our churches today, we cannot but bow our heads in shame. Everywhere you turn today, you find division, quarreling, and bitterness. You would agree that as long as two humans live together, there is bound to be friction. Even some siblings cannot see eye to eye. How were the early Christians able to live in one heart and soul? The answer is mercy. Willingness to sacrifice for, for the good of others and forgiveness, letting go of wrongs. These are two qualities that any Christian must have. Otherwise, they are not different from unbelievers. Mercy is stepping into the shoes of others, being able to feel their predicament and coming to their help. The early believers could live in peace because they practiced compassion for one another. Share the little you have. Remember, whatsoever you do to the least of my brothers, that you do unto me. Matthew 25 verse 40. The second aspect of mercy is forgiveness. It is showing kindness to your enemies, even though they don't deserve it. If you were in the shoes of Jesus, what would you have done? How would you treat those who are inflicting pains and wounds upon you? And you have the power. You have the power to destroy them. The answer to this question is, how did you treat those who have hurt you in the past? When you think about the way you treated those who hurt you in the past, then you will know how you will likely treat those who will who hurt you if you were in the shoes of Jesus. If you have behaved like Christ in the past, you are truly a Christian, not just a churchgoer. According to Bishop Godfrey Honor, if our enemies succeed in making us hate them, then they have conquered us completely. Christianity without love, including love of the enemy, is empty. A Christian without that love might as well be of any other religion. Lesson number five. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet they believe. Thomas was not with the disciples when Jesus first appeared. And when he was told, he said, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. John chapter 20 verse 25. The fact is that most of us Christians are just like Thomas. We have told ourselves that unless we see miracles happening, unless we see and touch Jesus, we will not believe. Many have completely turned their backs on God because they felt disappointed like those two disciples who turned their backs on Jerusalem and were heading to Emmaus. Just as Jesus appeared again and showed himself to Thomas, Jesus has never stopped showing himself to us through the ordinary events of our lives, which we often take for granted. If only we learn to count our blessings rather than constantly complain, we would see that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. And may the blessings of Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen.